I don't have enough different voices to use. Hello everyone, welcome back to House TM. Thanks for dropping in. Today we're gonna to talk about hit points and why you might even wanna consider removing them entirely from your game. Before we begin, let's get on the same page about how Dungeons & Dragons defines the concept of hit points. In 5e, hit points are defined as a combination of physical and mental durability, the will to live, and luck. You might be wondering, hey Jake, why are you talking about this and why should I care? And to that I would say, I went down quite the rabbit hole on tabletop RPG game theory. I read countless articles from The Gladiston by Questing Beast, a fascinating discussion on the Rune Hammer forums, and a brilliant blog post on Prismatic Wasteland. Links to all those things are in the thingy down below. What I learned is there are a ton of different ways to handle hit points in our hobby that I had never even heard of. I seem to have grown so comfortable with this sort of video game mindset that when you get hit, you take damage and I don't know lose blood or something until you've lost enough you know life force and you run out and die but when you're sitting at the table as the GM and you're describing to your players as getting hit I always tend to default to explaining it in this fashion the goblin hits you with their short sword cutting into your armor and drawing blood the direwolf chomps down on your armor with its bite digging into your flesh the fire giant brings their massive great sword down upon you but somehow you survive with five hit points. What's confusing to me is missing your target's armor class is considered a miss. But if you hit your target and you don't reduce them to zero hit points, narratively that's also kind of a miss. That got me thinking, why do we need both a roll to hit and a roll to the extent at which we hit? A great question that I'll propose a solution to later in this video. Going back to that fire giant example, that great sword should have destroyed that character. However, since my character has five hit points left, they can still kind of run around and do whatever they would want. Functionally, they're the same as though they hadn't been hit by that attack. So if we narratively describe HP as fatigue or luck, then we say our character narrowly missed the attack by somehow diving out of the way? Well, if we do that, then we've removed that description from the pool of possible narratives for explaining why that fire giant's greatsword ended up missing. I hope you can see how this can become a little tricky as a storyteller. Anyway, a user by the name of Anthony C and several others describe this in pretty solid detail on the Runehammer forums, and you can hop into the discussion there. As I read through all these ideas and articles, I immediately found myself wanting to test out all of these ideas. So with that, I began drafting my own house rules that was inspired by the two main solutions that were presented on that forum. Option one is to remove hit points, and option two is to remove armor class. Both of these ideas are quite radical. Can I say radical? Radical, dude! Radical! <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Oh my god. I want to explore each in detail, share my opinions, and if you'll humor me, get your take on the matter in the comments down below. All right, so the first idea to explore is removing hit points. My only experience of playing a tabletop role-playing game without hit points is through Viking Death Squad, which you can learn a lot more about in this video right here. In Viking Death Squad, you technically get one hit point, but if you take damage without any armor on, then you're just dead. Having run my first session of Viking Death Squad, I actually really like the idea of armor being like supreme extremely important in combat. It felt simple, it flowed well, and it was really exciting to choose between which armors you were willing to lose just to stay alive. It also got me thinking, what would it be like to bring this sort of system into Dungeons and Dragons, specifically 5th edition? And of course, what would it look like to remove damage and only calculate hits? Viking Death Squad gives each piece of armor three hits until it is completely destroyed. Since you can only have four pieces of armor equipped in Viking Death Squad, and they each can take three hits, as technically 12 hits plus one, so 13 hits you can take when you're fully armored. Perhaps to make this work in D&D, each character starts off with five hit points plus your constitution modifier. So a character with a plus five con score has a whopping 10 hits before they begin dying. So when an enemy rolls to hit and meets or beats your armor class, you just mark off one hit. And if an enemy scores a critical hit, then maybe you mark off two hits. This fundamentally changes combat. Now imagine this. You draw your longsword and face off against a bounty hunter who's been following you for the last three days. Ready for you? They strike. The bounty hunter lunges at you with their blade in hand, rolling an 18, beating your AC by two. They hit and your HP drops from five to four. They go in for a second attack and roll a natural 20, scoring two hits, bringing your remaining HP down to two. If you take another two hits like that, you're done for. Your party's cleric, seeing you're in trouble, runs up to you to cast Cure Wounds. They magically heal one hit point, bringing you up to three. Now you're comfortable going in for a round of attacks on this foe. 
You roll to attack and score a hit by beating their armor class. And the bounty hunter, seeing that you have a devout follower of the light, decides to flee. This adjustment to the game would probably be the most work for the DM as you now have to change spells and abilities to accommodate hits instead of damage. So if a longsword hit does one point of damage, how many hits should a successful fireball deal? Maybe a successful fireball just does one hit to all enemies within its radius. I can see how this can get tricky, but I can also see how this will potentially turn into a really cool project of mine in the future. Let me know if any of you are interested in seeing what that would look like. Let's take a look at option two. So I'm gonna go back to a question I brought up earlier in the video, and it's why do we roll to hit and why do we roll to see the extent at which we hit? Why not just roll for damage every time? And then if you do a large enough amount of damage, then you actually would wound your target. An interesting question, and here's how you would do it. For this to actually work, we need to make two fundamental changes to how armor class functions rules is written. The first change is instead of rolling a d20 to see if you hit, you would just simply roll your damage dice. Seems easy enough. The next adjustment is a bit more complicated, but I'm using a similar formula that you would use to convert your 5e standard combat into a player facing combat style. I explain this in more detail in this video. Nope, in this video, it's up here. It's actually up here in this video. So the second change is how armor functions mechanically. The best and simplest way, in my opinion, to make this work is to have armor function as damage reduction. To determine determine how much damage reduction your armor provides, take your armor class and subtract 10 from it. Whatever that number is that's left over, that's how much armor reduction you have. And to simplify the following example, let's call that difference your new armor score. And now an example featuring Blarg Blarg the Orc and Tavos the Generous. Blarg Blarg the Orc is wearing medium armor that gives him an AC of 16 by 5th edition's rules as written. If we convert Blarg Blarg's AC to an armor score, we subtract 10 from his 16, which leaves him with an armor score of 6. Our hero, Tavos the Generous, engages the orc and attacks with his quarterstaff, which deals d6 plus strength damage. Tavos rolls a 3 plus his strength score of 2, yielding 5 damage. Thanks to Blarg Blarg's armor score of 6, Tavos dealt 0 damage to him as all of his attacks glanced off of Blarg Blarg's armor. Now, it's Blarg Blarg's turn. Blarg Blarg grabs his axe and swings it at Tavos, rolling a d12 plus his strength score of plus three. Blarg Blarg rolled a 12 on his d12, a critical hit. Blarg Blarg gets to roll his weapon dice again because of his critical hit, yielding an eight on the second roll. So 12 plus eight plus three equals 23 damage. Tavos has an armor score of four and thus takes 19 points of damage from the orc. Tavos is badly injured, but now it's his turn. One of the biggest concerns I had when I read about this concept was being kind of sad about the concept of critical hits going away. But I think that's remedied with critical hits triggering on a max damage die roll, netting you an additional dice roll. Apparently this isn't a new idea, but the one term that I keep seeing pop up everywhere is called exploding dice. That means each consecutive dice roll has a chance of rolling max damage again. And you can technically, although very unlikely, do an infinite amount of damage. This also means that daggers have like a 25% chance to score a critical hit, while a great axe only has an 8% chance. Both of which, mind you, are a lot higher than the typical 5% in 5e. With this armor score system, we have now combined the to hit roll and damage into one roll. Is this system better than the tried and true method of rolling to hit? I don't know. I think it's a really cool idea and I like it a lot. Also, let me know if you plan to try this out in your D&D 5th edition games, your index card RPG or OSC or whatever system you play. I'd love to see if we can get a discussion going on this. Personally, I'm a big fan of adding house rules and hacking my games, so if you are too, I highly recommend you watch this video next. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Hits you with their sword, their sword short. <laughs> Doing this is hard.